And I'm going to apologize ahead of time if I botch this intro because I'm not used to having two guests in. So uh, let's do it. We'll, we'll go through it together. All right, I like We're it. here for you. Appreciate that. Be gentle. <laughs> Greetings and salutations. Welcome to this episode of Playwright Spotlight. Before we begin, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below, and share this show with your friends. If you're listening to us on your favorite podcast platform, be sure to leave a five-star review and subscribe to the channel. My guests today are a playwright and actor who trained at Dartmouth College and the Achilles Studio in Los Angeles. He is also a founding member of the Three Weeks Notice Collective, with whom he recently premiered his play Conversations in Exile, an original adap adaptation of Chekhov's Three Sisters. His newest play, Thirds, opened September 6th and runs through September 26th at the Zephyr Theater in Los Angeles. His co-story creator is a cast director and is the mind behind the story of Thirds, a graduate of NYU's Tisch School of the Arts and the Stella Adler Conservatory. She's cast films including The Shawshank Redemption, Primal Fear, Kiss the Girls, and La La Land. She's a proud member of the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts, and Sciences, BAFTA, and the Casting Society of America, and has been nominated for 18 times for the Arturi Artios Awards by the CSA, winning for the features Red, My Week with Marilyn, Coda, and La La Land. Please welcome Ben Edlin and Deborah Aquila. And please tell me that I pronounced that correctly. Aquila. Aquila. You know, and I meant to, meant to ask you beforehand, and I, as soon as I started, I'm like, you didn't ask. <laughs> I'm glad I got it in here now. Thank you guys for coming in. Thanks and I, for and I, I, I wrote this out how, how I was going to say it, and then I still went back to my other way. And so the so I, I, I wrote down the mind behind the mind of the story, even though I know that you both have worked on the story together. So that's what I kind of want to start out. I want to start out with who kind of came up with the, the original concept and then how the collaboration started and then continued. Okay. Um, I just wrote about this last night. <laughs> and you can we bring just, that a little closer um, to you. Sorry, sorry. That's we okay. Just, no, we just um, want to make sure we hear it. We were just talking about this because um, I had to sort of write this out for the notes. Mm -hmm. um, it was around 2017. Um, came across uh, an article that really sort of stimulated the thinking process. Um, got some stats that were not great. And... There, it was a cautionary tale, this article, uh, that was pretty nonpartisan in its writing. It's Pew Research Center. And um, <clears throat> it, it just got me thinking, if we don't come together, we're never going to hold together. Sure. Yeah. Um, so communication. It, it, there's got to be um, facts or facts or opinions or opinions, and sure. we all have to agree yeah. on facts. Yeah. And if we can't agree on the basic facts, like maybe there's gravity – Right, sure. The earth isn't, yeah. you know, it's not flat. Yeah, um, we're never going to hold together, and we're never going to listen to each other with compassion and empathy. Um, I've been keeping my eye on this guy. He was in class at at uh, at the Aquila Studio. Very, very, very intelligent young man, very talented. And I came over to him one day and I asked him if he was a writer, and he said, "Yo, oh, here's my script." <laughs> he sent me a script. Um, I read it. I loved it. Um, and I brought the idea to him, and that was seven years ago. Yeah, the kind of basic idea of the article was interviewing all of these people who seemed sort of alarmingly comfortable with the idea of splitting apart as a country, and why don't people who agree with me, why don't we just hang together, and everybody who disagrees, they can hang together, and it would be easier for everybody if we just separated and did it that way. Mm -hmm. um, which has always been sort of seen of in our country as a terrible idea and something that should be avoided at all costs. So Deb came to me with this idea of what would happen, what would have happened if we never, if we never came together, mm -hmm. if, if we, we separated as a country, if yeah. the South seceded when they tried to secede, um, and how that version of history would have played itself out and, and would we have been better off? Would we be better off today? So is this, is, this a, is this a period piece, a reimagining of the past, or are we putting it present day and dealing with it if it, if, if it were to happen in, in the next five years? Or it takes place in the present day, but it's on a timeline of history in which a different story happens, in which Abraham Lincoln lets the South secede. They form a country, the Confederate States of America. Um, 
<clears throat> keeping the Union States of America intact and sort of hit our history branches off from there. And we sort of reimagine what might have happened in the 20th century, what that would have looked like, um, and how we get to the, the issue that the characters are dealing with in the play. And then there's, and why. I imagine there's a third faction because it's thirds. Yeah, so yes. <laughs> the idea is that when the South secedes, um, as the Western states start to get up, set up California, Oregon, Wyoming, all those places, um, you know, they're far away from New York City and they're far away from the politics of the Union States of America. And this precedent has already been set where they're allowed to separate. So they decide that they want to form their own country. Um, and so by the time we get into the 20th century, there are three American countries. There's the Union States of America, there's the Confederate States of America, and there's the Pacific States of America. Um, and they're all kind of trying to get along as siblings, step-siblings mm -hmm. on the same continent. Uh, How did, was, was there any amount of disappointment when, when the movie Civil War dropped? No. Okay. Because we're trying to get at something else. Sure. Okay. Um, we're trying to imagine a future where we're not together. How do we, how do we coexist together? Um, how do we trade together? Mm -hmm. uh, how do we interact? Um, so it's not the Civil War is happening sure. right. like right. In, the, right. in, that, in that great film that he made. Um, Lincoln never fought the war. He's not going to spill blood over this. Right. He's going to hope that social evolution will get rid of the problem in the South, you know, where they consider human beings to be three-fifths right. of human beings. Um, and he's going to hope that natural social evolution will take care of the problem, and he doesn't want lives and blood right. spilled. So this is, we're already in it. Now sure. it's like, how do we stitch back together? Right. Yeah, it was interesting when that came out, when, when we saw that it was going to come out and then seeing previews and things like that, because it is a very different take on that issue and a very different sort of angle into how something like that comes about or came about. Mm -hmm. um, but it was interesting to see, because we've been working on it for a while, um, when that came out, it was like, oh, this isn't, this is something that people are thinking about. This is sort of in the, in the zeitgeist. It's on their minds. Um, and, has, sure. and has been for a while. So, so we figured that this would be the right time to bring our version up. Sure. So how much of the story had you had outlined or who had, who came up with the original concept? First of all, this has gone through <laughs> seven years of different drafts, different. It lived as a pilot for a while, it lived as a series for a while and went back again. When I came to Ben, I was just like, what would happen if he never, if he, he decided, no, I'm not going to spill blood over this. I'm not going to, we're, right, we're, just let it happen. You want to secede? Go. Yeah, we're Let's too, see. We're too different. We're too different. We, yeah. we have uh, ideologies that are too different. Go. But I'm not mm -hmm. going to kill people right. over this. Um, and then from there it took off, like, okay, so how, what would that look like? What would the history, we'd have to redo the map. We would have to redo the history of what we all know to be true. And it's very tricky sure, because yeah. there are things in there that people relate to, right? I mean, we had two huge world wars in the 20th century. How do we mm. deal with that? Um, how, do we, how, do we, how do we deal with the, with the milestones that happen in historical reference so we don't? We basically hinted it a little bit, sure. but that's not what the play is about. No, just sure, absolutely, the, yeah. The play is about, at the end of the day, this. Right. Empathy, right. hope. How do we communicate? How do we get together so that for the good of the people? And I don't want to give the ending away, but... Yeah, you, please you, don't. No, I won't. <laughs> you take it. You take it now. Um, yeah, when she came to me with that idea, I thought, obviously, it's very kind of startling, um, interesting concept... And I was a history major in school, and so that, that's always been interesting to me. And so the idea of marrying two things which I really love, which is theater and writing and story, um, and kind of concocting an alternate version of American history and threading in the things that people are familiar with. Um, because you can't just have a whole play explaining the backstory of your play. So the, the idea that these people have lived in this reality, they have experienced that they know their history. They know kind of what they're told of the other countries. Um, you know, how does that 
uh, how, how do you relate to your own, the culture of our country? It's not, it's not something that's constantly on your mind every day, but it's a part of, it's a part of you and it's a part of where you come from and who you come from. So how do these characters relate to each other? How do they interact with each other? Given the fact that they're dealing with this alternate version that mm -hmm. an audience might not be totally familiar with how do you how do you communicate those bits to them at what point did you guys decide all right this is going to be a stage play it's not that it, it, this is going to be a stronger piece on stage than it would have been as a pilot or a television <clears throat> we always movie we, or a, we started as a play then okay. the idea got sort of got out there um, yeah we had a, a reading of the play I, yeah uh with some very cool actors and really talented people and we had some you know people that we trust whose opinions that we cared about come see it um, and after seeing the, the initial reading of it, which was six, six, seven years ago now, which is crazy, um, this, you know, this one person said it would be great as a pilot. So we kind of went in that direction. Um, but it was interesting because of everything that was sort of going on in the country at the time. Uh, it seemed like it was a little bit heavy, um, and people weren't quite interested in exploring that mm. at the, this at the moment. Um, Not when they're living through what they're living through during sure, those sure. years, yeah. right? Yeah, and yeah but plus, now, right. like things, like you mentioned, civil war and things like that, it seems like people are, and everybody that, you know, we've been talking to about this as we've been producing it, it's just gotten more timely um, in a very interesting way. It's like I watch the news and something happens and it's, we're always just... Did you see that? Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're texting constantly. But, but one thing I forgot to mention to you is that there's a device in the play and a worry. Mm -hmm. And that worry is this. It's mm -hmm. water. Okay. So the reason that it's imperative for these countries to come together is there, there's a terrible drought. One person that lives in one country has a solution. And that person is very interested in bringing that solution to the stricken area. Right. So Just imagine, yeah, well, imagine the Dust Bowl. Sure, it's yeah. back again. Yeah. How do you save these people? So again, it's it's um, it's very timely, especially because of what happened two weeks ago at the yeah. DNC. You see this wave of hope. You see this wave of joy. Our joyful warrior right now. People are craving communication and connection. We're tired of of being in our bubbles and just, you know, listen, you know, I'll be honest with you. I was prepared, prepared myself for what was going to happen a few years ago. I tried my best to be okay. What I wasn't prepared for post Obama years was the hatred. I wasn't prepared for it. I didn't know how to deal with it. I didn't know how to process it. I didn't want to live in a world that had that in it that to that extent of course there's always going to be that that element but this were waves and waves of hatred and i feel like that's not who we are mm. at the core of what we are i feel like we're more empathetic to each other than that if given the chance sure yeah and getting out of our bubbles yeah i mean one of the main things that we are exploring with our piece is, is the idea that we've sort of it seems like how however you whatever side of the political spectrum you come down on, um, we've sort of forgotten how to talk to each other in a, in a productive way. Um, and the issues that we're facing as a country are important. They're always important. They're always very high stakes. Um, and the only way to figure those out is to be able to talk to each other, to be able to talk to somebody who you disagree with, mm -hmm. um, and to be able to disagree with someone without hating them or thinking that they want you and your family dead <laughs> um so we sort of use this device of these countries are actually literally physically separated mm -hmm. sort of in the way that we find ourselves today sort of ideologically um and if they can kind of overcome those barriers uh then why can't we sure overcome mm -hmm. ours so you get your first draft done you've and then what, where do you go to next? What, what's the next step after that first, that next reading? The pilot's kind of shelved. Yeah, bye-bye. Mm -hmm. And then have you talked about a feature or no? No. Okay, it goes back to a play. Yep. Yeah. And now that you've done that, where do we go now? What's the, what's the next step How, after you've 
decided to go back to the, the original pro uh, you mean at that moment in time yeah yeah and what did you so I want to go through the whole process of how it's developed what's changed over the, the time how it you know what's changed what obstacles you might have overcome to try and from, from a writing process from a story process because you really want to make sure that that, that that are really unpack different approaches because everybody it's I look at this podcast as if everybody wrote their own playwriting book. Mm -hmm. Totally. You know, because I can pick up a book and I'm not going to get really what I'm looking for. Right. And I'm hoping by having these conversations that I can't ask a book, I can, you know, kind of get you yeah. know, to where there's that one writer out there that might be, that, oh, man, if I can only get overcome this one thing that I can't figure out, oh, here's, here's this solution right here that I never would have thought about. So, so Breaking a story, yeah, right. So, especially with my background, sure, I'm used to I'm used to breaking a story. Mm -hmm. I'm used to sitting in rooms where people break stories. Mm -hmm. But what they do is they bounce ideas off each other, which is really a, a, such a gift. So you're sitting there, and it's not like we haven't had our um, arguments about sure. things. And what 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 are you going to hold on to? What hill am I going to die in that hill? Sure. Mm -hmm. All right, Ben. If you don't do this, please. If you don't please, I'm, that's a hill, you're going to bury me there. And he just laughs. And then it turns around and he's like, he thinks about it and comes back and keeps me waiting for, you know, 24 hours. And I'm like, he hates me. And then, you know, he comes back and he goes, he goes back and he goes, well, what if we did this? And I'm like, oh my God, it's so much better. <laughs> And and so that's what we did. We bounced off each other. Is this as far as approaches go? Is it like this? The this, this scene isn't working. We got to change it. Is that is that sometimes kind of the scene wasn't working? About? We'd read it together. Um, we we would do that a lot. Mm -hmm. We would actually read it out loud. Sure, and, yeah. You know, see that you know what's what's happening. What um, what do, what are the are the devices working? Is this sort of what what is character? We're both character based people. So mm -hmm. the way we work, um, I'm speaking for you. Um, backstory characterization um, from from that core developing these characters the dialogue starts to flow kind of naturally, very naturally actually and from there since we've broken the story in, um, in into thirds <laughs> um, we know where we're going now we have to see how we're going to get there through these characters. Mm -hmm. Hand it over to you. Um, yeah, I mean we, we knew we had this broad idea. We knew what we wanted to accomplish. I kind of went away and we discussed kind of if that happened, if that didn't happen, if that word didn't happen, what would the countries have looked like? Did a lot of research and reading and things like that. Kind of came up with a broad sort of arc for what, what we wanted to communicate, what we want to play about. And then it's about, then it was about finding these characters who represent these different ideas, who come from these different places. Um, and sort of at this moment, at this time, the business of this play is that there's this terrible drought. Mm -hmm. So what, why are we starting the story here? And why are we ending the story here? Why are we picking this particular aspect of this massive history that we've created? Why is this chunk the important one to talk about? When we, when we go, like, because we also have a, we've worked together in, in class at the studio, sure, right? Yeah. One of the, basic questions in script analysis that you always want to ask, at least the way we work. Um, why now? Why not tomorrow? Why not yesterday? Why now? And so we had to figure out that device of, okay, we're doing a story, but, but why now? And that was the major sort of device and the thrust of the story. And it goes from there. Yeah. And it, sorry. No, no, I was just going to say, I completely understand and agree because I mean, like you can't include all of the, you know, the, uh, um, Playwright I had on Oliver, he, you know, he called it framing. You take, you know, kind of like how much of the picture do you want to sit? You got to kind of zoom in and you can't include it all. It's, it's almost impossible. And I don't know if that's kind of along the same lines. Yeah, totally. It's yeah. also, it's also trying to find the kind of cross section of these characters lives that will get the most of the story across. Uh, I mean, so, something that I think about, it's interesting acting and writing whenever I have to do, one or the other, I'm always kind of getting a different glimpse into into the other one. Like, as an actor, when I get a script, generally, the reason why this story is being told, what I have to kind of build, is that this is one of the most important stretches of time in this character's life. This is 
a moment of the character's life where he will change or he will learn something or something incredibly dramatic will happen, right? So as an actor, kind of retrofitting that, if I'm going to start a script, I'm coming out of a, at it from a place of um, this is the most important chunk of these characters' lives, and why is that? What what are what are the stakes of this particular part of their story that is meaningful to tell? I want to go back to something you you'd mentioned earlier as well, like going through the the the, um, the backstory. I mean, did you do that? Did you go through all those things with these characters, and how how elaborate did you go, and what were the things that you you touched on, and is this prior to writing any amount of dialogue. Yes. Um, we would discuss the characterizations um, pretty at length. When uh, Listen, this is the way we also, this is the way I teach, sure. right? No, right? This is the way no. I was trained. So you go through everything that's relevant emotionally in a person's life. You know, it's not for writing an essay. You're not looking for an A at the end of it. Nobody cares. If it doesn't move you emotionally, if I can't see it, I can't make you see it. If I can't feel it, I can't make you feel it. So we had to do that for our characters. Um, why would the character of Catherine, for instance, see, I can't discuss it without giving the plot away, but I have to be careful. So why, so why is well, this? Well, let me just yeah, set it up. Okay, you set it up. Go ahead. So essentially we have this whole backstory where there are these three countries. The business of the play is that there's this terrible drought in the South. Um, and did you know that, that that device going in, just out of curiosity? Yeah, it was Sorry. always okay. all about water. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's this terrible drought in the South. And... Um, the main character of the play, arguably the protagonist. I'm going to interrupt you real quick because I feel bad because I have you, have you leaning in. You can pull that towards you. It, it'll it'll okay. move. I feel bad that you're, you're, you, you lean in. And I'm like, I feel like going to walk away out of here with a, with an achy back. Um, my back is already achy. <laughs> um, so the main character of the play is this woman, Catherine Shepard, who uh, lives in the Pacific States, and she is essentially the you know, Steve Jobs of water. She's invented all of this um, technology for filtration and desalinization and piping and irrigation, um, where she's basically got rid of droughts in the Pacific and the Union States and the Pacific States are a little bit more aligned. Um, so they work together. So she's this incredibly powerful person in the world. And her dream is to be able to use this water to bring the countries together to bring back this sort of um, you know idea of cohesion and, and familiarity and, and brotherhood so her she's been working her whole life essentially for this moment where these people really need her she's invented all of this technology these pipelines just for this case if it, if it were to happen and now it's happening so the business of the play is that she's built this pipeline all the way to the border between the Pacific States and the Confederate States. And she and her sort of right-hand man are flying down into the Confederacy, into the capital in Montgomery, Alabama, which was the initial capital of the Confederacy, um, to negotiate with the government there to try to get this pipeline into the Confederacy to bring this water. So when Deb talks about Catherine, that's who she's talking about. Yeah. So are you approaching backstory more as like behaviorally why would they or are you like going through um like michael jammon he'll he has like i think 32 or 36 things that he'll ask about a character what are, that's right how do they feel about this how do they feel what kind of we do 132 uh, wow okay for <laughs> yeah all right anyone, 232 anyone, anyone who's worked with deb professionally in her, in her class knows that you cannot be specific enough with a character, where they're coming from, what what moves them. Um, so th there really isn't any detail too small. Um, as long as it moves you. Right, as long sure. as it moves you emotionally, because I'm not interested in an essay, and I really don't want you to bring right, home an right. A, except in this case, I really, really want to get an A. But I want people to understand what sure. we're trying to yeah. do. You know, um, Unless it moves you, it's not useful to you. But there are moments in your life, there are moments in my life, his life that we can tell you our life stories, but we're going to tell you stories that matter that because we remember them, right? right. right. Like this particular episode that happened to you when you were five years old, right? Right. Um, if I asked you how, do you remember breakfast on a Sunday morning when you were five, May 21st? No, no of course not. Right. But if you right. had eggs that morning and you never had eggs before, and you were allergic to the eggs, you remember that morning, <laughs> right? Right. Makes yeah, sense. Yeah. And right? you, as a 
as you feel differently about eggs now. So it's <laughs> like yeah. building those things that those yeah. sort of like linchpin moments in, in people's lives that have led them to make believe, the decisions, believe, believe yeah. what they believe, um, led them to be the people that they are. And, uh, when you have two people who you have honestly and truthfully and emotionally created uh, a really strong foundation of who they are and why they, why they feel the way that they do, when you put those people in opposition to each other, it makes for a lot more interesting uh, sure. and dramatic mistakes. Core, core philosophies, core beliefs, things that you would plant your flag on, right? right. Um, when they come together, Right when they when they when they do this with each other, you know, you're at loggerheads. Right. Those core values, those inherited values that you have, and hopefully you've evolved along the way as you're reflecting on of those values. You just don't you don't ingest them and not think about them. But the evolution of those ideas will either make you more fervent or maybe more tolerant. Right, and that's what's interesting with our characters because you will meet each one of them, and they will have a point of view, a very strong one. And they come together, and they come at each other with those core values. Now sure. we're going to have to see right. how we're going to get along. How we're right. going to how we're going to do this for the people. How are we going to do this? How we're going to how this isn't about us; it's about them. Right. Now, how are we going to come together and try to negotiate and empathize with each other for their sake? Right, and maybe we're successful, and maybe we're not. Fingers crossed. So you, you you've got your device, you've fleshed out your characters. Now what happens? What's the next step? Um, in our case, I just sort of disappear into a bunker for a little <laughs> while and um, throw stuff out the wall. I mean, my my process is really like the first draft. The first couple of drafts are really just trying to get every idea that I have sure. on the page. Um, which is, which can be frustrating because I'm aware as I'm writing it that, you know, this doesn't quite link up or this might not make sense or, or, you know, that's not quite the through line that I had intended overall, but it just kind of needs to get out. So you push through, you're not like fixing as you go or are you? Um, well, when I sit back down for the next day, whenever that is, the next time I sit down and write, I will read through what I've written before just to give myself a, a sense of, of sort of uh, motion and direction. Um, and while I'm doing that, if something jumps out to me, I'll, I'll, I'll edit. So yeah, normally by the time that I'm done with a first draft, there, there have been parts of it that have been drafted a couple of times, just, just because it, it, I can't, I can't get it all out in one sitting. Um, but by the end of the first draft, the yeah, the beginning kind of third, I guess, will be in a little more crisper shape than than the ending of it. Are you writing linearly, or are you like I have, I know what the scene is. I'm gonna write it now. I, I'll figure out how to get there later, or is it just like I almost always write linearly. Um, that just sort of gives me the best sense of uh, the story that I'm writing. But th this, the most recent draft of this, was actually the first time where. I didn't because there was just this one scene that I couldn't crack, um, and it was delaying the, being able to finish finish that draft that needed to be finished, so people could see it, and so we could kind of start moving. Um, so I just skipped that and then wrote the rest of it. And then as soon as I wrote the end, I just went back to the scene, and it just kind of flew up, flew, flew out. So that so was you, that was interesting. That and it worked. Yeah, I mean it's. Throughout the entirety of the years that we've been, he would send me pages. We would often meet in person. Um, I missed the tap building. And we would meet in person, we throw it back and forth to each other, and he would give me those pages, and I would make my notes on those pages, and perhaps we'd negotiate. Mm -hmm. And we would start the negotiation process of characterization, and would this person use this language, um, this language from my point of view, is a little bit uh, perhaps out of character. Um, then we'd fight for it, right? And he would present me his point of view, and then I'd present my point of view, and then <clears throat> hopefully there was a detente, and um, then would disappear. So why six to seven years, just out of curiosity? Well, 
it we kind of once we had that reading um i think we both agreed that it would be interesting as a pilot so that was kind of a a, a different sort of trajectory for it um spent a lot of time working on that workshopping that taking and that was a good two years yeah um and sort of going in some directions that we were you know guided in or steered in you know that might not have been the right ones um but after that it was sort of do we keep trying to do it as a as a as a tv show do we want to go back to a play there have been so many drafts of it at that point that it was it was uh it got a little bit muddled and and it seemed like what we were hearing from people was that um they weren't really up to hear this kind of story at, at the time it was just a little too gnarly um <laughs> to put it in the timing sure. yeah. to put it in my own voice if people are living it they don't want to see it um, they don't want to see they want to see something else yeah and then COVID happened, and that kind of shut down everything. Yeah, yeah fair um, enough. That's a good point. <laughs> That's a very good point. Yeah, so that was like three years, basically, of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then things uh, started opening back up, and we started to start kind of seeing elements of the story and echoes of the story sort of in our, in our daily lives in a, in a bit of a more approachable way and in a bit of a way that it seemed like people were more willing to engage with and, and face uh, given, you know, what we had all just gone through with COVID and, mm -hmm. and everything. And so, uh, and so we picked it back up. That was like 10 months ago. Yeah. Oh, wow. Right, okay. Right, right, right. Here ago. And we, had, yeah, we came together, you know, I, I took the brave step of sending our texts. Our texts could be a book. <laughs> um, it, there That's are so true. many. Um, hey, Ben, what you doing? <laughs> 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 Want to meet up? <laughs> Hey, Ben, open the drawer. <laughs> Let's take it out. And that's what we did. And then we started working. It's radically different. That's what. That's exactly what I was going to ask. How much has changed from, from draft one, even to pilot, even to... I have every revisit. draft. Yeah, yeah I mean, this, yeah. this is essentially a, com a completely different play than the one we started writing. Okay, so you open the drawer, <laughs> and then what happened next? Well, you sent me a text back. <laughs> <laughs> we met up. Um, and like, if not, now when? Yeah. Um, open the drawer, read through it. Um, and at this point, it's just the both of you reading yeah. back and forth mm -hmm. and not having anybody else involved. Yeah. Okay, just curious. Yeah, well, I mean, we had had, we were working with a production company for the pilot, and so so <laughs> people were reading it, and we were getting feedback, and, you know, it was being steered in different directions. But then we put it away for a while, and I certainly didn't look at it for a while. But it was always, like, it was never far from my mind um that the, that there was something to it and that there was something to these characters and that it was a there was a, a story that seemed seemed like at least part of the discussion that people were having or should be part of the discussion um so picked it back up read it um remembered some of the stuff about it that i really loved and and that really worked and sort of cringed at some of the other stuff um <laughs> And um, just kind of re restructured it in a, in, a, in a way that felt a little more approachable, felt a little more um, natural and, and sort of working in the this, this space and the conceit of the theater sort of into the story. Um, and, uh, and when I sent that one back, it sort of... And all of a sudden, it had it had legs again, and it had some momentum, and, and it and it happened quite fast. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. because then it's the country started to crystallize. Mm -hmm. okay. um, again, it's a cautionary tale, sure, but hopeful. And when we cracked that, uh, it was like that's the story we're going to tell. Okay, all right. And then before I get into the the next steps, I do want to because obviously there's going to be a little little friction here and there when you're collaborating. So what obstacles did you have, have to overcome? And then what advice do you have for somebody who might be working with somebody who might run into similar situations? Patience. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, in patience and in, in what aspect? Is it I had to get Ben works in a way. I'm going to speak for you. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> from my point of view, he has to go into the cave. When I understood that Ben needed to disappear and go into the cave, I had to just like 
get myself together and stop bugging him. When did that happen? When you said stop <laughs> bugging me. Gotcha. So, well, yeah, come on. Yeah, and then I realized, you know what? Leave him alone. It's 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 either going to happen or it's not. You know, look, life happens. You realize that this is going to happen or it's not going to happen, mm-hmm. right? You learn to be patient. You know that the story is there. You know he loves it. You know that it, it's we've cracked it. I just have to. I just have to be calm and trust that he's in the cave. He's doing that. He's imagining. He's working this out. He's going to send me pages eventually, and eventually the pages started to come, mm-hmm. and that was really exciting. Yeah, I mean, for me. Um I've, I've never been great with deadlines in terms of the writing. Um, <laughs> as, as soon as there's a, as soon as there's like an expectation date, obviously that just adds a, a different kind of flavor to it. And um, I mean, as far as, from things that I've read and, and from writers that I admire, it's like, there seems to be kind of two camps. Basically there's like, you get up every day and you write no matter what comes out. Uh, you're a writer, so you get up every day and you write, and that's what you do. And then there's the other camp, which I, I'm, I'm, you know, I aspire to that camp. But the camp that I'm more often in is that a, a wave of it will hit me, and I'll sit down and I'll write it, and you know, 30 pages might come out, and then it's tough to it's tough to get back to it when you know that there's a deadline. So trying trying to manage that aspect of it. Um, and See, I had to figure that out. <laughs> so enough. I left him alone. And then I realized, oh, wait a minute. If I tell him, because this was like a little fib, uh-huh. this is going to go up in the fall. <laughs> and it is. Yeah, well, it, well yeah, but yeah, worked. but that wasn't, <laughs> come on, that was a total fabrication. Sure, but it worked. <laughs> so, but I get it because if I come from an approach that, that, It'll be ready for you when you're when you're ready. You have to be ready. The story's going to be there. It's all going to come together. Mm-hmm. Just you have to be ready for it. And then you know, I think it's a Stephen Pressfield thing. If you've ever read the yeah, uh, art of, the, war, the war of art, yeah. I always do the same thing. Art of art of war. No, war of art. Yeah, war of art, yeah. yeah. So it's always that thing. Like the the, the muses will show. Um, okay, for sure. That's the patient aspect. But like, what about the disagreements? Like when you're you're going back and forth, and you're both fighting for change. I guess, or, or you're maybe you want to keep something in, you want it to go away or you want it to tweak it. I don't know. What about like that? What about for those moments? How do you, I've never talked about this with you. Um, I feel myself getting very red. Um, there are only a couple of times that I really got passionate, 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 like, dude, no, this character is <laughs> never going to say this never. And, and please see my point of view. And he was very generous in, in that way. And sometimes he would just be like, Ooh, tough. No, um, you're going to have to see my point of view, but somehow we never really fought that way. No, I mean, we never fought. No. Um, and I think it's, we thought on it. So not we, fighting. We thought a lot. We thought a lot. Yeah, and we thought, we thought it. a lot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that if you, I mean, if you're going to collaborate with someone, it doesn't make any sense to not collaborate with them. Sure. Yeah. Uh, if, if you're going to do something with someone, it's important to have an open mind and see where they're coming from. And, and uh, usually, you know, two heads are better than one and you come up with something greater together. How, um, what, what was the give and take? Like it was a 50, 50, 60, 40, 30, 70, you know, in what terms, in terms of like, winning, how many times, arguments? how many times did you, Given and change. <laughs> and then how many times did you say tough, I'm keeping it. And then out of how many of those did you realize like, oh, Deb was right. I would probably say it was a good like 50, 50. I mean, yeah, I'd, I'd well, say. And for, were there for, moments that you found that, that what he, when he said tough, I'm, it's going to stay that way that you well, like, well, oh, I know, I know they see it. Or once I got off my high horse <laughs> and stopped leading with, you know, my, no, 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 she wouldn't say that. I was so married to, to hearing her say things where these characters lived so vibrantly in my imagination. Also, I'm kind of a, 
careful person in a way in that I'm, I'm worried about, I'm worried about making sure that everybody's okay. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm worried about this is, this is Ben, this is harsh. (laughs) Right. I remember that one conversation and he was like, no, don't you understand this? This really means she means this. And I was like, can we think about this for a second? And I would table it and, and the next day I would call him and either say, you're absolutely right, or I still can't move with this. Mm. And he was very generous, and he would think about it in a way that was, it was I don't ever remember an ego fight. No. It wasn't about that. It was about how do, how do we make this the very best version of what this can be in the truthful characterizations that we're creating. Yeah, and also from my... From my point of view, it's like I'm, I'm trying to see things on a, you know, on the on the wider arc and on a macro scale, and so that there's some, sometimes where, uh, you know, I would I would say like, yeah, we'll we'll table it. I hear your point. Let me just show you where I'm where I'm going with it. And if mm-hmm. we like that direction, then then that would make more sense, and we would either agree that that's the direction that it should go or not, uh, or, and change it, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that we have both been, like, yeah, ni- neither of us wanted to just force something out where the other person was unhappy. So uh, so we took we took a lot of time to make sure that we were... Precise. Uh, pr- precise, mm-hmm. but also really hearing each other and making sure the other person felt heard. Mm-hmm. Um, and where there was space to make something... That was from the both of us. That's what we did. And a lot of times I didn't understand. I, I will say that. I would read it, and it's a dense play. Um, and the ideas are rich, and they're, they're sometimes can hide in, in the obtuse. And I want to make sure that they didn't, so that if I was confused about something that was in that big brain, I'd be like, mm, it's in your brain, but I don't. Right. I'm going to read this as an audience member, and I'm a little confused. So we would map that out very precisely Ben is very considerate um, he's very considerate of the characters themselves um, and sometimes uh, we would have to go back and forth on a choice of words it got down to words <laughs> what does that look like? Uh, circles <laughs> and, okay that, Cir- that, no, that's great okay, Cir- so, no, and circles then- and a lot of begging okay, so, or it- explaining is yeah, it I mean, just finding for, a synonym, or is it just like... Well, for, for better or worse, uh, when I'm writing, it, ha- it has a lot to do with rhythm. Okay, sure. Um, and I kind of hear the conversations in my head very sort of uh, musically and rhythmically. Um, and so the, for me, the word choice is, um, is always very it, pre- precise and mm-hmm. exact. And yeah. so um, it's less so that you know, I, I don't think that I'm particularly precious or no, no. Or, e- or egoic in, in any of that stuff, but just changing a word changes the rhythm. So That's right. if a word changes, then something else has to change and things mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, going back and forth on that. In, in, so when you, when you talk about rhythm, you're hearing conversation, are you going, are you adding those little, I don't know if they would call them idiosyncrasies, but like like the, the ums and the uhs and the well. Yeah. Or are you like, those. okay, are those the circles or? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and I go back and forth because I find that, and I, I criticize them when I'm, I have a playwriting workshop that I do uh, at a theater festival in Sacramento, and I always tell them, like, get rid of it. And then I go back and revisit my stuff. I'm like, yeah, get rid of that. You know, because I, I, I don't know. And I, I let, let, let me throw this up to you, Dev, in that regard. While those may be appropriate, is that does that land more on the actor to add those things in? So yeah, I was I was hoping you were going to ask that. Yeah. I will come to this work with that. So if you have an, an ellipses, yeah. All right, so you have an um, hmm. right? If it's not a, a a habit um, right, which takes your power away, right? Um, as an actor, as a character. Can you expand on that? Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> no, I was just taking a beat to think. Ah! But if I did that consistently, 
right? Um, that's a habit. Sure. And that habit has no place in a piece that is as tightly written as what he what he created. Mm-hmm. In, in those spaces, right, as, as far as those words that were chosen, right, um, uh, you know, um, and you'll, you'll see that behavior a lot. And that's a behavior that is either um, unconscious or absolutely put in there for a reason. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing. If you're going to have an ellipses or if you're going to have somebody cut you off, like we would read it together all the time, sure. right, to see if the rhythm worked and, and right? If you're going to cut me off after I say, but but listen, this is real, and then boom, you cut it off, right. right? I have to continue with my internal thought. Right. Right. right? right. Because if I don't have the internal dialogue, if I don't have that set, if I don't know what the character is actually thinking, then it's going to sound... Uh, false. Sure, one hundred percent. Yeah, but if he cuts, if he as a character cut me off in the middle of that, then I have to be able to come back at that because I'm still thinking. <clears throat> right, right. So I have to be able to come right back in, and that's something that he's great at doing. No. Okay, good. Well, it's, it's also in, sorry. Are you done? I'm done. Um, <laughs> it's, it, well, it's also interesting because we've been in rehearsal for like a month. Um, you know, you, you have an idea for how things sound on the page, but then when right. they're yeah. in the mouths of real people and, and you're talking about how it feels to be in the space and you're interacting with other actors and they have their own processes, mm-hmm. um, it doesn't always translate exactly. So um, I, I, try to, I try to make them as naturalistic sure. and, and honest and lifelike to the characters as I can, which includes stammers or ums or idiosyncrasies like that sure but then uh if, you, if you're in the space and it's not working you have to be able to change it it's i mean it's it's interesting acting in something that i've that i've written and rehearsing rehearsing with people um and being directed by someone and you know it's, it's a collaborative thing so at a certain point everybody like we were talking about earlier everybody else is what they're bringing to it uh makes it more and it makes it it makes it better. So you have to be open to that. And then you have a conductor. You have this yeah. wonderful director that we're working with, and you have this conductor that's like conducting an orchestra. Yeah. Right? So it's not only just blocking, but it's these intellectual pauses and thoughts that have to be filled um, and um, have it. Mm. But pause to think. Because the dialogue in this play can sometimes be rapid fire, right. especially in the dinner scene. Mm. You better know what your subtext is, right? Right, because in this play, sure, not everything that what you're saying is what you're meaning, right? Right, um, and that's the beauty of the duality of that kind of conversation. Yeah, yeah and, and going going back to the interrupting in the ellipses, I found there was a playwright that I that I it was just a great use of interrupting rather than the Mammoth? ellipses is no this like slash where it's like cut off. Oh, like, yeah. they, you know, I, I know that I've stopped there because it's an interruption rather than a mm-hmm. waiting for that next thought or getting up, losing that thought. But I just, I found that interesting. Um, Cock had a lot of slashes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. A lot. So yeah, the whole thing is slashes. Yeah. <clears throat> You've brought it out of the drawer. You've got this next draft done. Everything's fallen into place. Ish. <laughs> ish, ish. What, um, so what happens next? What, what, what's the next step? We look at each other and say, oh, shit. Oh, am I allowed to say Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> um, we got to do this thing. Yeah. We got to go. It's, yeah, I mean, we, we sent it out to actors that we were interested in. Um, we sent it out to... You know, what's next is, like, uh, assembling the team, you know, send it out to people who we want to work with, who we think would help us execute this to the best of our ability. And uh, the first thing we had to see is if they were interested. Luckily, all the people that we wanted and and were interested in read it and then were interested in it. So we sort of assembled the the team that we wanted to. Um, Really great actors, really great producer. Um, She's great, and the- so is that the table read at that point when everybody the yeah. whole cast gets together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and even the designer run through the other day. Okay. You know, it was the same thing. The composer came over and just uh, he had it memorized mm. almost. 
it was he was quoting back lines to us and he was very very invested and huh. that made that really made oh my god you have a riverside shakespeare i do <gasps> hoisted upon me in college Shakespeare. I, had, I, would, I, I would, had a Riverside Shakespeare. I would flip the camera around, but we don't move our cameras. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> that's okay. That's, that's, that's why we do it. Shakespeare factor yeah. sounds like it hurts a little bit. Oh, yeah. A lot of it. Um, but yeah, what was very cool is, yeah, you, you send it out, people get back to you, they're interested, um, which is exciting and, you know, all of that stuff. But then we, we got in our theater space at the Zephyr Theater in, uh, on Melrose, and uh, we had a sort of an initial table read at the start of rehearsal and all the designers were there. And when that was over, everybody kind of knew that we were, that we were all in the same boat and where we wanted to go. And it was sort of a, a really unifying thing. Um, and it really kind of brought the team together, so mm -hmm. to speak. So yeah, that, that was, that was very cool. And at that point, as you start going, are there any, do any changes happen? Are there any oh, yeah. adjustments in the script or in what were those? How did you adjust? What were some of the, I mean, the changes? It's, it's really been just in the room, uh, kind of the, the actors kind of throwing these things at each other and um, seeing what, you know, normally the best version of something is the most concise. So figuring out, I don't need to say that if I said that here or I can get that across with performance or we, we can we can do that with a look, you know, okay. those kind of things that might not necessarily occur to you when you're sitting at your computer, when you're in the room and you're in the space yeah. to make it more, uh, more of a naturalistic interaction. So yeah, there have been lots of things that have been cut. Um, so, you know, an actor might say like, you know, this particular part of the sentence is just like, I just can't get it out. Can we change that? And so rather than holding on to like, you have, you must say what I wrote. It's mm -hmm. like, no, the, the, the goal of this is to have it be the, the most effective version of it. And when you bring in, when you bring people in to do that, who those people are change what the most effective version of the thing is going to be. Mm -hmm. Were there any, um, I told you so moments where like maybe you wanted, <laughs> you, you wanted to change and then it was like, uh, or they, I guess, I guess we'll see in September, <laughs> but, but not during, not during this process. There hasn't been yet. No, no. Okay. Okay. I wasn't sure if that anything, no, like, if anything, it's just something that's just sort of, if I'll go to him and say, if, and, mm -hmm. and he'll look at it and consider it or not. Mm -hmm. We just had that mm -hmm. session the other day. Yeah. Over one word. Mm -hmm. Big word. It's a big word. So everybody that you put it out to, everybody's happy. They all, everybody that you wanted came came on board. Okay, and that collaboration was. Uh, They're finding it. Okay. They're finding it. these characters are hard. Sure. Were there? Did you? Were there any like? I don't want to call them happy accidents, but anything like, like oh wow, I didn't I that was not snuck in there. I didn't, I never realized that, 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 that moment was there, that there was an, an unintentional happy accident, I guess, you know? Um, yeah, totally. I mean, we, uh, we have, a or great, even discoveries that the actors might've brought to the table. It's like, Oh, I never thought of it that way. That's well, yeah, great. We, yeah. we have a, a great director, Jess, um, who we, we did a lot of table work. And so, for you know like a week and a half uh almost two weeks we just kind of sat down and read the scenes out worked workshopped them asked questions um you know uh, the writer in the room as well so sure. you know any questions that people had of the backstory of of this sort of world that we've built um and when you kind of break it down yeah you see different actors and different artists bringing their own energy to it, their own thoughts to it, which is, yeah, it's a, a lot of times it's, I, I don't think you want it to be or need it to be exactly what you thought it should be. Mm -hmm. I think that you try to make the script as, as solid and as, you know, purposeful and, and good and effective as it possibly can be. Um, 
I have a as, question. As, as a sort of sandbox for other actors to come play and, and mess around. Sure. I have a question. Go, let's have. hear it. How difficult was it for you to let go and switch? The, one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. So how did talking you, about the switch going from playwright to actor? Yeah. Yeah. And how did you... I'm still in trying to it, do yeah. it. Yeah. So wait, but wait, the executive function that's going on, right? So how did you... What's... What's the, are you comfortable sharing that process? Like, what's well, going yeah, on I mean, with you right now? Now... You want to sit here? <laughs> uh, now I just try to, when I walk in the rehearsal room, just let the other stuff go. Because, because we've had the benefit of, of, of plenty of rehearsals, so things that were might have stuck out or um, things where, you know, in my head I would say, well, that's not quite what I... When I envisioned when I was writing it or whatever, right. um, we've had those discussions and we've worked them out. So, so now it's in a pretty streamlined, uh, collaborated space, um, which is really nice. And so now, now my my effort is sort of to to shut all that off when I walk in the room and just be an actor, just be present. So I want to expand on that because you normally I would I would always ask as the playwright working with the director, but now we have a different dimension. Now now we're you're the actor and the playwright. So mm-hmm. normally I would just say, how was the collaboration between the play, you, the playwright, and the director? But now it's just like, now you're the actor and it's just, I mean, well, now I, that you're on stage, it's one thing to be in the back of the room as the playwright and be there to answer any questions. But now as the, the actor on stage, you're like, well, that's not how I wrote it. That's not what I, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? Well, it helps when you have... The great director. It helps when you trust your director, which I definitely do with our director. She's amazing, um, and she's also like Deb. You know, the best the best idea wins, and I think sure uh, we we both kind of subscribe to that, so that there isn't any or we try not to bring any ego in, into it or, or anything like that. Um, when something has happened where, um, you know, that hasn't quite been what I thought or whatever, um, we, you know, I, I have just kind of put my hand up and said, you know, I just have like a, a writer, a writer thought, you know, this was sort of the intention there, but that kind of works. So let's do that. Or maybe let's have the chat. But um, because we have, a good relationship in that way and because all the actors are so game on this um those conversations are you know are comfortable and part of the process and and that's the, the honestly the benefit of having lots of time to rehearse is, is getting to figure that stuff out sure my, well my original question was 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 it always the intention to have you in 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 the cast yes yeah okay and as that role particular role or did you write it for yourself? Or uh, well, I am an actor, so I most of the things that I write are for myself and some capacity to be in. Um, but yeah, we we had initially thought that I would play a different role. Yeah, um, and then mm-hmm. when I that was one of the big changes when I when we picked it back up because um, we kind of wanted to go in a slightly different direction and. There's something that I personally was wanting to explore more with. That's right. You know what that what that new direction would be. So, uh, and, so and we switch that. And the times changed, right? So there's so much that happened, right? Yeah. From 2017, as as we just sort of mentioned, yeah. you not only went through the years that we went through from 2016 to 20, but then you got we got hit with a worldwide pandemic. Yeah. Um, how does that change a person? How does that change sure, you? Yeah. How did that change us in our relationship to each other in the world? And and then other stuff started to happen worldwide. And, you know, we're very kind of news junkies, I, for better or worse. And we started to communicate about that. This, I think that's one of the things that is actually pretty great about how the, how the meatloaf was made. Hmm. Because we're talking about these issues, and they're very important to us. And a lot of them end up on the page. Mm-hmm. Um, and also just having more, having that time to kind of sit with the, the themes that we're trying to, mm-hmm. you know, get at and um, how they all sort of, it, 
they kind of coalesced around each other and, and it kind of became clear that, oh, this, this could be about that too. And it could be about yeah. that too. And um, picking the things that made that the most emotional impact on us, you know, without calling the pretentious police, it's, it's like, it's, these things are important and sure. they have to be mm -hmm. talked about. Yeah. Um, what's your, what's your, do you have a background in playwriting? Um, I, I started writing in college. Um, when I realized that I wanted, because I started doing plays in college sure. as, as an actor right. and kind of realized that this is what I wanted to do with my life and I was going to move out here and, and go for it. Now, is this through playwright, playwriting classes or are you just dabbling, just kind of like, I'm going to... So th this was just acting, like going out for auditions in college. Sure. Um, and when I realized I wanted to do that, I decided, I, I realized I didn't really have anything to show for myself. So I wrote a, I wrote a script for a film that I shot at school for myself to play the main character in just to, you know, be able to show that to people. Made that with, uh, with this guy that, uh, I met in a film class and that movie got into some film festivals and won some like audience awards here and there and kind of got me my first manager. So that kind of got a foot in the door. And, uh, then it just became clear that if, you know, if I was going to do this, that the writing would be a helpful part of it. Now, um, it's sort of, I mean, it's a, it's always a bit of a maddening process writing yeah, something, yeah. but it also, you know, particularly during COVID and particularly last year with the strike, which was, you know, the worst, yeah. um, just a way to stay creative and kind of stay sane. And where does the shift into playwriting take place? <laughs> when does that happen? Normally when I have an idea for a story that I think would be interesting and kind of presents itself immediately in a medium, I'd like uh, this is clearly a play or this is clearly a film or this is clearly, you know, prose or a poem or something like that. Um, this always, the, the challenge that we were really interested in with making this a play is how do you communicate this outside world and history and timeline? How do you communicate that, you know, in a box essentially? Um, and that was a great writing challenge. What was interesting for us with the pilot was, oh, now we can go anywhere. Yeah. We can show people how this happened, different places where it's happening and, you know, Open really, really, up. really blow it up. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what's been interesting with this version is we sort of merged those two and half of, half of this play uh, is filmed and it's sort of a, it's a documentary that one of the characters in the play is making. Um, That's nestled inside the narrative. Yeah. Wow. So okay. we, we kind of, hop back and forth between what's happening on, on stage and what's happening on screen. And, um, you know, at the end, hopefully it'll make sense out of those stories we weave, weave through each other. No, absolutely. And that's because that's uh, obviously there's, there's challenges because obviously there's a difference between mm -hmm. script writing and, and playwriting, you know? Um, and I find it a lot with, with beginning playwrights where it's just like they write a, 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 a two sentence scene and then all of a sudden they're in a different location. Did you, were there challenges that you found that you had to overcome yourself in regards to like, Oh, uh, this is the stage I got to, but I mean, you're also writing in two mediums at the same time for this particular piece. So mm -hmm. were there challenges in that or, or did you find it was pretty easy just because you already have that experience writing um, screenplays and scripts? Yeah. I mean, to, for me, Dialogue is dialogue. Uh, I don't really differentiate too much between, you know, this, this is theater dialogue or this is stage dialogue. So that, so the, the soul and the heart of whatever's going on in the scene, you know, also working with Deb and doing script analysis and things like that. Um, that doesn't change too much, which, you know, just from the process point of view is, is that uh, a film page reads, reads quicker than a theater page. Right, right. So figuring, trying to figure out the timing of it um, to make sure that the show is, you know, a, a, an acceptable length or, or a suitable length uh, altogether. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, the, the challenge, the the it's, I mean, the challenge with theater is that that your scenes have to evolve organically in the same space. Right. You don't you you have a lot of different options when you're working with film. Mm -hmm. Well, bringing that up, bringing uh, appropriate length, what, what was the 
is this a, is it a long one act? Is that is it two act? Is it a three act play? And then where was the length challenge, if you will? Like, mm-hmm. did, did you find it was too that. short? Do you find it was too long? Yeah. Well, yeah. So it was. So it's two acts. Um, our you know goal was to try to get it in sort of a ninety minute no intermission uh, kind of kind of space, but um, at the end of the day it just made more sense to kind of give this, give the story the space that it needs to breathe and, and to make sure that, you know, the audience comes and, and they're comfortable by the end because there is a bit of a twist. And so we want people to be dialed in and, and really be able to focus on that. So we decided to put in an intermission between the acts. Um, I mean, our, our goal with this is always just to present the best version of the story right. and to, uh, give people a show that is, you know, as fully realized as it can be. Mm-hmm. And so, um, the best version of the show is the one with the intermission. Fair enough. But I want to go, go, I'm going way back to the beginning because I got the gist of you had gone to him about, do you know, do, do you write? And then it was like, here's my script. So what was the, <laughs> <laughs> Who, whose initial story was it? And, and were you carrying that in your back pocket? Like she it just, was, yeah. My, no, yeah. No, that's absolutely not true. I had like <laughs> big back pockets. No. But like, so who, whose initial story was, who came to the table with, yes, I can write, and this is the, an idea the, that I've been thinking of, or the, did you already have it? The initial story was very loose. Like what, what would happen if this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened? And then we just sort of started to craft it. Like we broke the story together. Um, and then that changed and then it changed again for the pilot. And then we had to change it back. Um, but so many years had passed and so much, so much happened in the world that it became very clear what, what the assignment was. And so then we had to break the story again, Mm -hmm. but then Ben came up with something after 150, 50,000 drafts that with circles and notes and back and forth, back and forth. Um, he said, I have an idea because we couldn't, the ending was still bugging us. Mm-hmm. And he said, I have an idea. Um, will you trust me on this one? And then I didn't hear from him for a long time. What's a long time? <laughs> well, I had, to Not go, gonna, I had to go shoot a movie. That's right. I had to shoot a movie. <laughs> I was crazy busy in my work as well. And, you know, so I just left it alone and so, yeah. he just percolated. Okay. Yeah. There was like, <clears throat> um, I mean, we picked this back up. Yeah. Like last year. Um, and then there was probably three, four months before, mm-hmm. before, you know, the, the initial sort of like new draft. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I just didn't, I had to go work on this other project and I just didn't have time to, I had 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 this idea for this ending for a while. Um, and I just didn't have time to, to write it. So I said, you know, this is a version, it kind of works, but it's sort of without an ending. Um, Mm -hmm. and just, just, if you'll trust me, I'll, you know, I'll send you my idea when I, when I can and came back from that. And, uh, you know, another couple of weeks, maybe, Mm-hmm. or month month um had the new one and luckily you know the team responded to it and that's that's our ending it's a terrifying month so at <laughs> at, at, at what point Speak did for yourself. <laughs> at what point or did you uh at what point did you reveal that there is not going up in the fall well, or was that tonight? This we, is the fall. We are going up. On no, September exactly. 6th. But 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 I know that you went into the false premise, like, hey, this is going up the fall. You oh, need yeah, to finish no, no, it up. We have what? to do it. Yeah. We have to do it. Start raising the money. We have to rip every. We're doing this. I didn't believe that, and no, not not for a minute. Mm-hmm. Is it, just, this is the first time that that's come to uh, out in the open. I think so. <laughs> I didn't believe that we would actually pull it off. <laughs> I I've never done anything like this, as I told you, and I thought. But there are certain things that happened in my life. There are certain things that just made a resolve that um, this has to get done. Sure. Yeah. I hope it's received well. Uh, we mean it to be received well because we mean to put something 
empathetic into the universe to, yeah. to put something that helpful. Yeah. And again, pretentious police. I don't want to do that. I want to say that we're, we're trying to do that, but I just didn't know that we would have the time. Right. And so I was worried about it. Of course I kept that to myself until tonight, but <laughs> we open in a week and a half. Well, yeah, we, hu- we hustled and everybody really brought their A game. We shot the, the, the film portion yeah. of it, like a, over a weekend. Yeah. It was like, well, one weekend in my yeah, living like room. Probably and 30, then, 30 pages. Or, yeah. Wow. You know, and then all, all up, together in yeah. probably three or four days, <clears throat> which is crazy. And, and just and so, got a great DP and our DP is fabulous. And they worked so well together in the film crew. She, she it all just happened. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that's just the universe saying, if you will it to happen, it's going to will it. It's, sure. it's going to happen, you know? If you put that energy out there, it's going to return to you. Feel the dreams. Bye. Stop. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, little Topanga Canyon, I know. But it, we just didn't stop. And this train just kept going and going. We're a week and a half away, buddy. Yeah, well, we definitely built it. Um, so yeah, we sure did. And I hope they come. We would love, we would love for it. So <laughs> we would love to come as we can. Well, like like I said, we we do we do miss we 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 missed the opening, but uh, there'll be at least uh, another. We open September sixth. Yeah, it, it, I I heard yeah, but you know um, this will drop on the seventeenth, but we get two years. weekends. We get two weekends, so there will well, that's be perfect. Yeah, we'll get we'll get uh, two. Uh, we'll get the ticket link down below in the show notes, so make sure you take a look at them. Um, and then we're sold out the first weekend. Oh, there you go. Look yeah. at that. Well, Almost. Yeah. yeah. Almost with me. There's a few seats left on Saturday and Sunday. Well, heck, if I would know that, I should have said when in the in the intro that uh, open set tender six to sold out crowds. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's true. So, um, outside of outside of thirds, what are you both working on right now? Whether that's another play, whether that's you know, in yeah. I'll go first. Or, or can you say? <laughs> um, I'm always kind of writing something, so mm-hmm. yeah. um, some other stories that I'm really interested in, in telling and making. Screen, uh, screen or stage? Some film stuff. Okay. Um, and then this movie that I shot in um, in April and May is is almost done, so we'll see, see what happens with that. Um, and, I mean, hopefully Thirds has a, a life, you know, longer than our four-week run, so definitely be... Mm-hmm pursuing that yeah i have two stories that i have to write okay what what medium not sure yet okay one could be a novel um i think it's many many generations it's many decades of a story mostly for my daughters to know where they came from oh nice um because it's a complicated story. Sure. And I need them to know that. I need to know I need them to know where they came from, what their history is, the real history. Sure. Um, which is a complicated one. So that's something that I'm I gotta get it done. And big, what's the other story? Big project. It's a very big project, huge yeah. project. Um so that's one. And then I have You need um, a writer? Hmm? You need a writer? I do. Okay. Do you know any? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. And I have uh, two children's books that I want oh, to nice. get done um, that I think are not bannable. Sure, yeah. yeah. I think they would be able to be on shelves for sure, a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. I want to ask this real quick because I don't want to be presumptuous when you say I've never done anything like this before. Is this the first stage play that you've ever? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. I've never done anything like that uh, before. I would be remiss if I didn't ask and found it, and and then found out that you actually had a plethora of plays under your belt, and I didn't even ask about them. No, mm-hmm. no, this okay. is both the most uh, fulfilling thing and the most terrifying thing. Sure, um, is that true? There are a couple of other terrifying things this year, but this is up there. <laughs> Different kind of terrifying. Different kind of terrifying, <laughs> but um, but if fulfilling and. Uh, again, so you know, we use that word hopeful, and I sure. feel hopeful. Yeah. And then uh, this question is what I always ask, but it's one of them is going to be really <laughs> obvious. Where can people find your work? 
Um, we come see Thirds at the Zephyr Theater on Melrose. Uh, we open on September 6th, and we're doing shows Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every week in September. And what about your your past plays or anything like that? New Play Exchange, anything like that? Um, Beyond the Ether, are they published? Uh, nothing's published. Um, none of the plays are published. Um, in a film called Mindwash, which is on Amazon, mm-hmm. which you can go Be check sure out. Check that out. Uh, this new movie is called Riding Shotgun, so we'll see, we'll see where that lands. Um, but in terms of my most recent work, you can come to the Zephyr Theater and check it out. All right. Take, take it links below. And then where can people find your work? <laughs> Amazon, I have, I, HBO, I really, I TNT. <laughs> Keep going. Uh, it's a it's a long Netflix. <laughs> hey, it's forty one. Paramount years. Plus. <laughs> it's forty one years of a career. Congratulations! And I'm That's very, wonderful. very, very grateful person. Um, well, well um, I I put my favorites in the, in your bio, so um, yeah. which are. Uh, well, the, sh- the shank, that's a given. Primal the shank, fear. it's now the shank. Oh, Lord. I don't think I've I've heard, somebody else, I've never heard the somebody shank. else uh, coined it that, and I've always referred to it as the shank. Okay. Yeah, it's better yeah. than Apparently, the, some people think it's a comedy, but that's a whole other discussion. It's probably show, better than the redemption. The redemption. <laughs> the redemption. Yeah. 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 That would be the comedy. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the yeah. shank. The shank. The <laughs> Shaw shank redemption. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then, uh, finally, are you guys on the socials? I'm not. Good for you. I, everybody, I think the last three people that I've interviewed have all said I'm not on the socials. Much to the chagrin of our uh, PR marketing team. Mm, oh, yeah. But I'm on the socials, but not really because they do it for me. Fair enough. I see. All right. Yeah. Um, well, Ben and Deb, thank you for coming on to this episode of Playwright Spotlight. Thank you so much for having, for having us. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Which was really, really delightful. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Playwright Spotlight. Again, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below, and share this show with your friends. If you're listening to us on your favorite podcast platform, be sure to leave a five-star review and subscribe to the channel. And in the meantime, and until we see each other again, keep writing.